YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Buddha back in the building for another Last Claudia critique video. With Last Claudia's latest update introducing the slots system, it got me thinking if the dev team has time to program an entirely new minigame with unique animations that nobody asked for. What's stopping them from introducing similar features that I feel would not only satisfy the current player base, but help gain and retain new players? Now, don't forget, these are features that I feel would improve the quality of this game, meaning it's opinion based. However, if you are inclined to agree with me, leave a like, tag Last Claudia, and share this video so they have no excuse to miss this community feedback. If you've been watching my recent live streams, it's no secret that my current relationship with the game is not great. To me, it's such a fiasco. It's such a debacle on Adis's end. It's really hard for me to even play the game and want to support them. So I figured why not use this video as an outlet to not only express my frustrations, but offer feedback and solutions in the form of five updates that I believe would help this game thrive in the global market rather than only survive with its current niche player base. But before we get into that, a word from our sponsor. Do you like basking in nostalgia while gaming at the same time? Star Trek fans rejoice with Star Trek Fleet Command which is an epic free-to-play mobile open-world strategic MMO. It's a free-to-play game on iOS and Android while also being available on PC through Bluestacks LD Player or other emulators. You can engage in epic battles, build your base, and take over the galaxy using powerful ships and iconic officers. New updates and expansions are added to the game every month. Complete epic missions in-game to gain rewards and interact with old and new Star Trek storylines like The Next Generation, the original series, and one of their latest expansions, Deep Space Nine. I was very surprised at how much fun I was having with the game, having no real tie to the Star Trek franchise, but losing track of time in the form of base building, attacking other enemy ships with my ship, constantly upgrading it, and building out skill trees for the captains and the ship itself. Even if you're not a Star Trek junkie, I highly encourage you to check the game out via my link in the description or the barcode on the screen. Build your second ship before making your final judgments on the game. Join the Booty Gang Fleet Alliance shortly after making an account so we can fill those 30 crew slots and leave our Booty Gang mark amongst the galaxies. Looking forward to seeing you up in space. Let's get back to the video. With that out of the way, let's talk about my first recommendation. New Summon Animations. This thought came to me after seeing the newest slots animations that I currently dread on a daily basis. Rather than spend time programming animations on a minigame that I honestly cannot appreciate, new summon animations have been a request from the time I have started playing and draw attention to one of the main features that I think every single one of us plays this game for. For example, new gacha animations that could indicate a new unit that's not already on your account or a guaranteed UR arc would give people that itch to test their luck and decipher what new animations indicate what, driving old and new players to their main money squeeze, the gotcha. Speaking on the gotcha, I want to talk more about the psychology behind a feature that I feel needs a complete makeover. Changing paid crystals to a new currency altogether. This may not bother every player that downloads the game, but I can speak for myself and some others when I say that seeing paid crystals when I started playing made my skin crawl. Regardless of their pricing structure, I think Last Claudia could benefit immensely from just simply changing the name and icon of their paid currency to something else entirely. I believe this is a much more modern approach in today's market that doesn't immediately scream pay to win for new players coming to the game. Simply changing the name and the icon to something like Red Gems to play off of their blue and red soul that they have going on. Or maybe calling them Diamonds and changing the hue to a slightly lighter blue I feel could go a very, very long way. Now let's move away from the gotcha 
which inevitably favors pay-to-play players and talk about something that all players can feed off of. At least one free unit every month, whether that be new or old. I think this game cripples its long-term player retention due to the lack of content after beating things like Story, Tower of Trials, The Maze of Tartarus, etc. As a player that has been constantly playing for two years now, it is very clear to me that this game's true long-term content comes in the form of their new unit releases. The only people that can enjoy this structure are either pay-to-get players or the second comings of RNGesus. I truly believe that introducing at least one free unit per month that trails the current power creep could draw in and retain a massive base of players that is lacking. It could motivate all tiers of players to log in daily to acquire said unit and work on the actual long-term grind of this game. That is unit building. Having these free units relative to the current power creep is crucial, in my opinion, since the older units have increasingly less value as the game goes on. It does not feel good to build blatantly out-of-date units when the rates are not on your side. This also gives all players opportunity to participate in event bonus points if they're not lucky enough to pull the latest units tied to that current event. I think an easy way to manage these new free units added to the game would be to add them to the premium gacha pool after the relative event ends. I do understand that this would increase the dilution of the off-banner pool rapidly, however, I still think this structure would result in a net positive for player gain and retention. I mean, look at the community response when freebies are given out, which has definitely been more frequent. Moving into a topic that I believe is more subtle but equally important compared to what I've already mentioned comes in the form of semantics a focused overhaul of correcting trait descriptions and streamlining lingo. If you've been playing for some time now, you may have noticed that Las Claudia is notorious for their translation and grammar errors. We may see one or two corrections every few updates, but there is still so much that has just been flat out wrong for so long now. Thanks to the homie tweaks, here are just a few examples of descriptions that are completely misleading. Our only saving grace at the moment is the messiah of the last Claudia data mine community, Lake and his gold mine website, where he determines the true effects of new and old additions to the game for us to understand. However, I believe it is in the best interest of the actual development team to correct these issues in order to strengthen the integrity of the game and give the player base confidence that they know how to explain their own game. I personally would be ecstatic to see a major overhaul and focused effort in correcting and streamlining their descriptions in-game. Finally, let's talk about an issue that has recently become out of control with the game's steady increase in popularity. Developing a proper anti-cheat system. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest turnoffs that the game faces currently. For example, I saw the true plague of this issue last time trial from the time of this recording, and after holding out hope that Adis would address this matter seriously, I was met with the exact same issue, even worse in the current time trial, only weeks after the previous debacle. And time trials is just one area that this game shows its lack of integrity regarding anti-cheat. We have cheaters that get banned, make returns with the exact same names, profile descriptions, and cheating strategies that just purchase new accounts and slip by any form of cheat detection until the players report these accounts. We also have cheating accounts that get banned in one area of the game, let's say time trials, only to show up in other ranking and competitive events without repercussion like the Maze of Tartarus, and vice versa. Now, I am no expert in knowing how to manage this problem, but there has to be a solution or effort that needs to be implemented before this problem tanks the reputation of the game's competitive scene further than it already has. I believe this game is built off of Unity, so maybe some of you all who are more knowledgeable in the game development software scene can offer insight and potential solutions in the comment section below. It's no secret that games will always have their flaws, and nothing can ever be perfect, but I believe it is the effort to constantly improve that separates a great game from okay to just 
flat out bad games. And I truly, truly hope to see Last Cloudia move in a direction that continues to make the game grow as I have spent so much time and do still have hope that this game has the potential that we all see. But that's all I got for you this time, guys. Thank you so much for watching and with all that being said, y'all know what we say, work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.